All right, so this is Do You Want to Build a Challenge? We can see TF today with Jason Ritzke. Jason is a nice guy who works for a company called Taos, helping people and companies get more out of their computers and themselves. He specializes in orchestrating secure, effective, and meaningful deployments of open source software that help businesses and individuals achieve their goals and dreams. He helps run DC562. I thought this was the short bio. <laughs> hey, you wrote this. <laughs> you probably recognize him from the Hacker Village where he has been helping run the ShellCon CTF. Please welcome Jason. Seriously. That was way too damn long. I wrote it to be, to be written. Okay. Um, so, uh, this is my, uh, you know, copyright claim initiation sticker. Always, always grab a frame from a Disney to make sure that no one can get money for your work. Um, uh, so, this is, uh, this is a talk about... Um, one of the things I realized uh, last year is that we don't get a lot of time when ShellCon closes. Last, I don't know who was here for last year, but we kind of get booted out really quick. And unlike, say, DEF CON, there's no time for a really long closing remarks uh, and time to go over anything. Um, so this is going to kind of be a state of the last two CTFs union, um, letting you know where we are, letting you know where we're going, and also talking about how challenges and CTFs get built and what you can do if you're interested in participating in that process. So, uh, without further ado, um, I'm Ritz. Um, I enjoy all of the things on this and I'm bad at all of the things that I'm bad at. Um, I spend a lot of time working with a group called DC562. Um, DC562 is the DEF CON group for Long Beach. Uh, so if you are down here and you are kind of like south of the Hollywood Hills and west of the 101, <coughs> We'll probably be close to you, and you might want to drop in and say hi. Um, and uh, uh, this is a shorter version of that long, long blurb. Um, I, I, I kind of uh, lateraled into security. I was doing just normal sysadmin work, started to do more automation stuff, and then started to hang out with all of these fun hacker people and started to learn. Um, a substantial amount more about security than I had known previously. Uh, and I still consider myself kind of a security community outsider and a hacking community insider um, in the sense of security is not my profession. Uh, infrastructure is my profession. Um, and so my slant on CTFs is going to be largely focused at infrastructure, but also with some pointers and some information about where we are for challenges. Um, and, and I really, you know, like this community and have enjoyed delivering these, uh, these CTFs with DC562 and, uh, and it's been good and we intend to keep on doing it for as long as we possibly can. Um, we're meeting in the same place regularly and if you talk to me later I can tell you where but it's not publicly available and I'm not going to say it on a recording either. <laughs> Um, conveniently, uh, well, first of all, conveniently, uh, if you have questions and for some reason we don't have time, I'm definitely going to be here for the rest of the day, um, but I'm super bad at train of thought retention, so. Um, but also conveniently, I really do, uh, do enjoy CTFs, um, and, you know, uh, I, I'd say uh, it's been something that we, you know, we're showing up at 7 or 8 in the morning. Um, after probably like two to three hours of sleep to deliver this, uh, and it's a very good time, um, you know, to come here. Uh, for 562, uh, if you do go to look us up, uh, there's a little button at the bottom. That's an I that, that goes to an IRC server. Okay. Uh, if if you can't get on our IRC server, don't feel intimidated. Still come say hi. We want to meet you. We want to see you. Um, so. Uh, we're talking about me. Um, uh, there's a whole bunch of people, and I was trying to figure out who is going to be at this talk and who's going to be interested in this talk. I was, uh, as I was telling Wedgie uh, earlier, who was uh, the announcer, um, I realized that I have a weird audience for this talk. All of the old timers aren't here because they know everything they need to know, and all of the noobs aren't here because CTFs are hella intimidating. So I've got this weird cross section of people in the middle, and I'm figuring we've 
either got people who are really, really good or really, really bad, but mostly we've got people who've gotten started and kind of just got the bug for this looks like a really cool and interesting thing and something I'd, uh, you know, something you might like to do. Um, I don't think this one's true, though. Uh, I, think, I think you're all interested in CTFs more than anything else. Um, so, to go back to my original frame, um, I would really like to seal the deal for anyone who's here and convince you all that CTFs are definitely something that you want to participate in. Um, they're definitely something you want to build. And uh, you can either be part of ours or you can be part of someone else's, but it's really fun. Um, so I'd like you to join me in the No Free Time Club is what I'm saying up front. Um, so let's talk about what is a CTF kind of from a high level so you'll have a framework to contextualize this in. Um, uh, CTFs consist of kind of a series of generalizable concepts, right? You go somewhere, there's a puzzle that you have to figure out how that puzzle is constructed could be in a variety of ways. You solve the puzzle, you get a token of some kind. You redeem that token for some kind of points. Um, and there's a set time. Um, I haven't really seen any CTFs that are set up that, are, um, that aren't bound by a time restriction. So I think that last one is, is pretty safe. Um, this is the mechanics for a Jeopardy style CTF because in a Jeopardy style CTF, this is what we do. Um, there are other kinds of CTFs too, and, and we'll, we'll roll into those later. Um, but we're talking about puzzles. You know, what kinds of puzzles? Um, you know, we've got our basic puzzles like this one on the screen, um, uh, which I'm sure you can, if you want to type that in manually onto a phone, you'd probably hate me a lot. So I hope you're watching this on a computer. Um, uh, challenges like this, uh, the second example, you know, you be in a server, try to get access to a file. First example is you get handed something. That something you get handed is a puzzle. Um, and you have to try and figure out what that actually means. Um, you know, in this case, you might know that in CTFs, a lot of flags come with a string of flag at the start, a curly brace, and then the actual flag contents and a string at the end. Uh, and you notice that that pattern is preserved overall. You might think, you know what preserves patterns like this? Any rotation cipher that only acts on the alphanumeric components is going to show me exactly this. I should immediately go to my rot toolbox. And just because rot 13 doesn't work doesn't mean it's not rotted by some other obnoxious number. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a whole variety of puzzles like this. And like I just disclosed, they kind of have their own unique idiomatic lexicon, right? Knowing that when you have a message like this that has these kind of curly braces, it's probably a flag that's been rotted is something very specific to this community. Like that's a very, just a widespread token format. You take the token format away, you've got almost nothing. Um, so we've got these kind of idiosyncratic puzzles um, and people get points from them and they get enough points really fast, uh, you know, uh, they, they win. Um, uh, King of the Hill uh, CTFs, which I, you don't see as commonly. Uh, CCDC uh, is more like a King of the Hill CTF without the Jeopardy part, um, <laughs> uh, in, in that sense. But but you're typically uh, it typically has uh, most uh, King of the Hill CTFs have not necessarily a Jeopardy but a challenge style component. But then. You'll also have a component uh, where you're trying to keep services up or attack someone else's services simultaneously. This isn't something we've done at ShellCon yet, um, but we're hoping to be able to do it in the near future, either next year or the year afterwards. Um, it's going to be a very interesting space, and we're going to need a lot of people being very interested in reading a lot of documentation all at the same time in order to make it work well. Um, so, uh, you know, in that sense, everything is on fire because you're constantly trying to manage solving puzzles with handling people who are, like, physically trying to ruin your point totals. Um, so, oh, yeah, like, like I said, in, in King of the Hill, generally, you, you know, you have some assets to protect and some assets to defend. So there are some things that you need to uh, manage and some things you need to be knocking down, and that's what contributes to all of the, um, all of the busyness. Uh, you know, but a good question to ask is like, we're doing all of this stuff, like, 
uh, you're here because you're interested in competitions, like what's the point of all the hacker games? Um, I think it's really telling that like all the pictures, in the, well, not all, but almost all the Wikipedia pages, uh, pictures for DEF CON are of the contest floor um, because it's like literally the most compelling nexus of activity in the entire conference. And I feel like the Hacker Village where the contest's at, at almost any conference, is the place where everyone's busy because everyone's 100% on. I had six people walk up to me today and ask you a question and I did not acknowledge them for 30 seconds or more because that's where they were in my priority queue and I am not ashamed of that. That is a, a majestic state to be in. Um, so the, uh, I mean, we get all these people into a room that get completely excited and completely switched on by what they're doing to the point where they, you know, I think we had a guy from another con who came in at 7 a.m. in the morning and he left when we kicked him out at 5.30. And I don't think he left in between, which is impressive and terrifying. Um, uh, you know, you get around a community like that, you know that afterwards when you go to the bar, um, you can have people that you'll be able to talk to you. I saw you working on the CTF. Were you working on that thing? Oh, yeah, I solved that thing too. Oh, my God, that was so hard. You know the level that you're working on each other with. Everyone knows the interaction that they're having. In a really big way, contests pull our community together almost more than anything else we do. We have a lot of talks. I really enjoy talking to you up here right now, but this is not... We don't have that same level of intimacy as we do if you and I are struggling to answer cripplingly hard puzzles faster than one another. Um, and I think it really ties together like huge swaths of our community. I mean, we've got, you know, like the very basic, <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, and, and <laughs> it's not so hard. Um, it, you know, it's, uh, the, there, there are a whole bunch of things that we, we have a challenge uh, on the board today that we realized about halfway through the contest, we thought it would be the challenge that everyone solved. And we were totally wrong about that uh, because we hadn't done enough side posting and there were m way more people that came in because they were interested than the people that came in because they were experienced. We weren't anticipating that. We had to throw in another challenge that was easier and feel very sorry for all the people who had already switched off. Um, uh, so we get those people, um, you know, and then we get these people <laughs> um, who, uh, you know, they're almost tired of the CTF because they almost don't care. But the one thing they are interested in is showing off. Like the one thing that they really want to come here to do is like prove themselves. And so you tend to see these, like you'll see in CTFs there will be like a, cl a ribbon in the middle of all the scores, there'll be a ribbon in the middle where all of the people who are getting started but competent like will be, and then there's this high flying ribbon of everyone who really wants to show everyone how awesome they are. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and there's also, you know, at the bottom, there's a band of people who logged in but don't want to see anyone see them having a really hard time. And so maybe if you're lucky, there'll be a thin band of whatever the Hello World challenge was, and it'll just stop there. Um, these are the people that I am most interested in playing the CTF. And I think I just need to like start delivering impassioned speeches like every hour in the halls in order to get those people in because um, these are the people that I want absolutely to be playing CTFs because they would, I feel, stand the most to, to gain in the shortest amount of time. Um, so uh, all of these people can, you know, if we can get these guys in the room, all of these people will, you know, get, kind of get meshed together in this, in this friendly competition. They all learn a lot about each other. They all learn a lot about who they're playing with. They might meet some people that they might have totally written off that are very talented because um, they get blown out of the water by someone who's just eh, sitting, uh, sitting, working on something. Um, and then, uh, you know, it it uh, it helps them also to see how much farther they can go uh, and what new things there are to learn. Um, oh, double slide there. Um, so we discussed Jeopardy and King of the Hill. There's other kinds of games that frequently don't occur in the contest floor. Um, we did uh, this year. Our CTF includes some more OSINT challenges. 
um, which are kind of verging into the realm of not pure IT security, which is good. Um, there's a lot of other things that we're interested in doing. Um, there's large conversations around way more contests uh, at ShellCon next year, and there may be, you know, if we can find a way to do a social engineering component without getting our pants sued off, having social engineering challenges would be fantastic. I don't know how some of the people at the SECTF get away with everything they get away with, so there must be some, some deep conversations that happen there. Um, and then there's physical challenges um, like, uh, you know, like datagrams. I don't know if anyone are you familiar with layer one with the box challenge, which is like a bomb defusal challenge. That thing is fantastic. Um, I, I really categorize this as slightly different from challenges that are things like, if you're familiar with the DEF CON scavenger hunt, large portions of that have, I don't know, less to do with the kind of, I, I don't know, may, maybe there is an element of weird puzzle solving in the scavenger hunt now that I think about it. Um, some of those are pretty obscure things to find. Um, so let's segue away from kind of the, the why. Um, and segue into the practical, like how do we run a CTF? How can you run a CTF? Um, first thing you need is content. Um, we have challenges for a CTF, right? Um, those challenges have to be developed by someone, but eventually they have to get packaged in some way that they can be run. So typically speaking, what we have is we'll have a team of you know, five to seven people creating challenges, um, and then two to three people actually running the challenges. So those people are, are physically like, like old school development, like throwing something over a wall in many cases. Um, and, uh, and so in order to do that, they kind of have to deliver to them something. You're like, is it a binary? Is it a gzip file and a shell script? Is it a VM, like what is it that they're delivering? So they have to deliver something, and then because they're throwing something over a wall, there needs to be documentation. Um, so we've gotten very serious about doc. I'm actually, I'm glad you're here, because this is yours. <laughs> um, so, uh, so we get pretty serious about documentation at the point where we have like a bare minimum set of like, if you can't do this, I can't run your challenge because I don't know what it works. And it's like, what's the name of the challenge? Uh, you know, what do I tell the people playing and how do I know how it works because I actually have to know too in order to do something with it. Um, and then, you know, uh, and then hints if we want to give them to people. Like, if we don't have this information, we can't run it, right? Instructions on how to operate it, instructions on how to solve it. Um, this is bare minimum for us. We're actually building this out um, for... Uh, for next year and as we as we get to some of the exciting stuff I'm going to be talking about later as we add more contributors we need to homogenize it even more so now we're to the point where it can't even be just text we're actually moving into structured data um, because we need to be able to automate even the integration of submissions into the workflow um, then you need infrastructure because you need a way to present the content um, I see my last slide is run underneath this one that's curious um, the uh, you need a scoreboard to keep all the uh, keep the scores on and to tell people where the challenges are. Um, we're using CTFD right now. Uh, it's not the best thing on earth, but it's also not the worst. Um, and right now, we don't have a better option that's not uh, way more um, way more intense. Uh, the Facebook and uh, Google CTF daemons are both fairly involved and are able to run really well because they can take advantage of, you know, the world's greatest infrastructure without trouble. Um, so I don't have the world's greatest infrastructure. I have three donated servers and two six-year-old switches. And someone brought me a Unify access point today and it, we have wireless because of them. Um, so. Uh, so you need a scoreboard to run that people can uh, people can uh, connect to and get the challenges. Um, you need a place to host your challenge. So for anything that's that's not a binary that just delivers people that they download, you need something to actually run that services. So if you're running VMs, you need VM hosts to run VMs, uh, or you need a public cloud. Uh, last year at ShellCon we didn't have internet, um, so 
public cloud was a non-starter. This year we, as you may know, kind of have internet. Um, and uh, hopefully next year we will definitely have internet. And so we'll be able to do, we wanted to put in more public cloud challenges because it's becoming such a big part of the landscape now. Um, but we can't like do that if we don't know the internet will be there. Um, so uh, we also need a place to store all the binaries uh, with CTFD, the CTFD, uh, CTF daemon that we use. That comes packaged in. Um, but I know a lot of teams have written their own scoreboards. Many times you'll find, um, I mean, obviously SANS is infamous for the holiday hack and being having an incredibly overwrought scoreboard um, <laughs> to handle uh, challenge dissemination. I mean, when it's an entire video game, like that's... That's very impressive. Um, but many teams have had terminal-based scoreboards where you'll uh, get a telnet or an SSH session and then be able to interact with the scoreboard through there instead of a web-based system. Um, so they have to have some form of binary management. They have to have a place to store all the binary challenges that people need to download. And then if you're in the cloud, you need a way to manage the cloud stuff. So for instance, we have challenges that are in an S3 bucket. Um, well, OK, then you need to be able to handle your S3 bucket. You need Either you need someone to do it manually or you need to start investigating automation, which is an interesting proposal because most organizations stay manual until they get along a little bit. Um, when you're starting automation, when you're a team of three, it's because your needs are so incredibly elastic. And I like to tell people CTFs are like the most elastic project you've ever worked on. Most of the time as you're developing, you need like three hosts. And then on CTF day, you need like a hundred hosts. Um, so uh, automation is very critical. It's becoming very critical for us. Um, uh, you can do a little bit with shell scripts, and you can do a lot with other stuff. And I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, we've actually already gone through three generations of infrastructure design. And uh, I think version four is going to remove, go going to involve going backwards. So, like last year for Shell Shellcon, um, we were actually doing all of the challenges inside of VMs that we ran, uh, that we virtualized on Linux. And every time a team came up, uh, we would run a shell script and we would put in their team name and we would hit enter, and it would build the team. Um, I'll tell you how that works in a second. Um, then we moved to. Uh, you know, still shell scripts, but running Docker. And by the end, by this time this year, we have a distributed cluster scheduler, which is uh, its own uh, beast. Um, so, <coughs> let's see. Uh, so, the, uh, sorry, this is the version one infrastructure. I uh, didn't realize I'd skipped over. Uh, this is the version one infrastructure. So, the first thing we did is we would, like, literally, we have a VM. We We'd save the VM out, we'd, and our shell script would copy the VM, mount the copy, uh, edit the files, and then deploy the copy. And so that's literally what we were doing. We didn't have VMware. We weren't cloning anything. We had a Linux box and a shell script. You can run a CTF with that, um, and we did it last year. Uh, don't try and run it with... 40 teams, though. That does not work. Um, but, but when you have 12, it works fine. Um, so that's, that's our V1. It works. Um, the Microsoft people will realize it's basically sysprep for Linux. Um, so V2, uh, you notice we have a lot less steps because we've now incorporated this new tool. We moved to having everyone do all of their challenges in Docker. And then we can use a compose file and now we have challenges running in Docker. Um, and then we move away from like individual hosts and having like server one, server two, server three to building a cluster. And the reason we want to build a cluster is because next year we might have internet. And so we want to get ready to boom, expand dynamically into the cloud. Um, and I will tell you that today, if you have been playing the CTF, it's been a little bit interesting. We've had some fun problems. I haven't run out of IP addresses in a long time. Um, <laughs> but that's one of them. I think I ran out of every kind of resource that I know exists on a Linux machine. Um, so so that's, that's, that's fun. Uh, so 
so we may be going back uh, and heading back to, to Docker Swarm or something uh, to get away from the morass that is, um, you know, Kubernetes or, or Nomad or similar uh, similar product. But, you know, our infrastructure is probably going to stay much more elastic and moving away from the scripts pointing at direct host model because we need to be able to get bigger and smaller as need demands. Um, and we want to keep challengers isolated from each other. One of the big things that we've had as frustrations in the past with the CTF is we will get logged into a box and be playing a CTF and someone else will be logged into that same box and they will do something stupid and we will get hosed out of the challenge for the next eight hours. That is why all of your challenges are on separate containers and they're all isolated from each other. Um, so we've talked about the infrastructure. Let's talk about challenge creation a little bit though um, because I have a feeling that most of you are here um, thinking oh, the infrastructure is cool but I really want to get around to making a challenge how do I make a challenge um, and like it's not like it's got hard stuff in it uh, and by hard stuff I mean just like stuff you have to do uh, that is harder than thinking about the challenge but it's not actually hard and I think I think uh, it will be will will come pretty naturally. Um, the first, when I say creativity, what I mean is you have to have a place to draw challenges from. Um, and so we have a bunch of different people who create challenges from us that come from very different places, and all of their challenges reflect the things that they're interested in. Um, so if you come into this process, and afterwards we walk out of this conversation, you say. Ritz, I want to write a CTF ch a challenge for you. And I say, that's fantastic. And you're like, what, what do you want to write it in? And you're like, I want to write a challenge in blo about blockchain because that's what's cool. If you don't care about blockchain, um, that's not going to go well. But if you're really interested in blockchain, we've seen some very silly blockchain challenges that were very fun. Um, anyone who went to layer one, there were, there were some fun blockchain challenges there. Um, <laughs> So uh, I myself always like to, I like to read uh, like old comp sci papers. And so I always like to take like little footnotes from the authors where they're like, oh, and you could also do this thing and go do that thing to see if anyone else has read the paper. <laughs> it's like my dead giveaway. It's like, oh, you also do this weird thing because you answered my question. Now you all know my secret. So if you find one of my challenges. Um, I don't know why that's it. Is this? Hold on. Control five. No, no, that's. Apologies for a moment. That's fine, we'll catch up. There we go. We did it. Hooray. We did it. So this is what happens when you write your presentations in restructured text and compile them into a website. Um, <laughs> sorry, you're all also secret beta testers. Um, uh, so yeah, creativity. Uh, skill, skill that you can cultivate. 
uh, find uh, find your your muse of things that are broken in interesting ways. Uh, I like to read old academic papers. Uh, also, uh, fun. You know all that software that you pick up and you're like, after about 30 minutes, you're like, this software is awful. I never should have tried it. Go pick that software up again because chances are it's really awful uh, and has <laughs> terrible, terrible security flaws. Every time I want to do something weird, I'm like Googling and I'm like, this thing on SourceForge looks super shady. And I have to remind myself to download it and put it in the folder of things to be investigated uh, because it could be really awful. Um, don't like don't dismiss the things that are really awful those are good puzzles because that's a that's an organic puzzle that's a puzzle that someone else made for you uh, also I've basically tricked you into vuln hunting but um, so uh, so that's a skill you can cultivate just by like not throwing away all of the uh, all of the weird things that you want to do um, technical abilities also if you're concerned about those um, you know if you're concerned about uh, I don't have the skill necessary to do this challenge. Well, that's uh, that's something that all of us face. We all have to do lots and lots of research when we build challenges. And if if you know your first challenge that you make is a base sixty four challenge, and you have to Google a base sixty four uh, converter, um, that's fine because uh, half of my team still uses web based base sixty four converters. So you don't have to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, everyone everyone loves uh, loves web based converters. So like you know, you don't have to uh, have to worry about your technical abilities. There is all kinds of levels, and frankly, the world needs more one hundred and one challenges. Like we walked into this challenge by the end of day one, we had a we had a fifty percent unsolved rate, and we'd like to see like a way more um, a way more, more diverse expression. So you know, don't worry. Um, you know, don't worry about those skills. They get cultivated as you build the challenges, and, and there's something for everyone to make. Um, it's also fun. Like, it's really, I can't stress, it's fun making a challenge in ways that playing other people's challenges are not. Um, because you have to start thinking about the game of it. Uh, you have to start thinking about not only is this challenge challenging, but is this challenge fun and is this challenge rewarding? Um, do I start off with something at the beginning of this challenge and gain a more thorough knowledge of it in the end? Do I get presented with a challenge in an area where I have no expertise and I have to cultivate a baseline just to deploy my other skills? So for instance, hi, this exploit is in an NES ROM. And you're like, oh, I've never worked in this domain. This will be fun. Um, yeah, so, so it's, it's good and it's fun to just feel free to, to spin out and turn every one of your experiments um, into an expression. Um, you'll learn, you know, you develop those technical skills. Uh, but then also, like, you, you end up getting the opportunity to share every single hobby and every single interesting thing that you have with the community. So... When I say, like, I'm weirding, reading those weird academic papers and finding the footnotes and then turning those into challenges, and, like, I joke that, uh, yeah, uh, I joke that, uh, that, um, <sighs> I joke that like I'm looking for interesting people uh, that have read this kind of stuff, but like the reality is that by the end of it, everyone's read the same thing that I have, and they think it's cool now too. Um, so you get the opportunity to tap into a group of people and uh, and uh, show them things that you want to show them, and, and expose them to new new things, and uh, and they will thank you for it, um, which is not something that you get to do usually with your hobbies. I know I walk around and try to tell people about like me being interested in computers, and they're like, "Oh, that's nice." So, so you can literally foist your hobbies off on other people. I give you, I give you a, bl a brand new opportunity to do that. Um, oh, uh, also, if you want to build CTF challenges and you don't like it, you haven't wasted that much time. Um, and, you know, we want you to come talk to us and build some CTF challenges for us next year. Ain't no reason not to. Um, come find us.